here welcome to our studio it's friday the 13th january and we are we're going to do some digital drawing today i haven't done that in a while and uh i thought it would be fun to kind of step out of my comfort zone we've gotten so many requests in the past to do dinosaurs and lizards and all kinds of stuff reptiles and uh so i thought it'd be fun to to do a dinosaur i pulled up some some reference i figured i'd do the most popular dinosaur we're going to do a t-rex and uh, I'm going to do my version of it. I'm going to see what I can do. I've never done one before, so we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Ironically, you're drawing digitally, and we're running a sale on Art Fundamentals traditional media. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> so uh, over at CreatureArtTeacher.com this weekend, we've There's got a bit. Nick, hey, by the way, Nick everybody. Birch, Dustin Blaze over there. Hi. Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. We've, that's fine. We've got a big sale going on, and we've got all of our art fundamentals courses are just ten dollars. There's some digital ones in there too. It's not all traditional. Pick up medium. your mic. I think it'll be better when you talk. No, that's good. Oh, okay. I'm right on it. Anyway, um, so if you head on over to creatureartteacher.com, they're all just ten dollars. They've got uh, uh, our drawing and uh, portrait drawing with. Uh, Ken's Produso's 10 bucks, watercolor courses from Aaron Blaze and Jenny Medved, charcoal drawing from Aaron Blaze, perspective drawing. We've got courses from Ronnie Williford on there. Uh, basically, everything you need to know to get started on your journey in art. Plus, if you spend $30 or more, you can get our drawing human anatomy course, which is absolutely one of the, the building blocks of good artistry. One of our biggest sellers, too. Uh, for just $5. So, yeah. And uh, it should add it to your card automatically. And if for some reason it doesn't, just enter promo code January. And you can go ahead and check that out. We've also got a brand new course up for pre-order from Tony Cipriano, uh, Sculpting Superhero Action Figures in ZBrush. That guy's uh, no slouch. Nope, he's awesome. He was a That's Disney trained artist. All of our artists are professional artists, teachers, industry professionals. Um, but anyway, head on over to creatureartteacher.com and you can check those out. Uh, the fundamental sale runs all weekend long. Same with the human anatomy deal. And uh, Aaron just left the room. Where'd he right go? Here. Go to go to uh, go to the full cam. Go to the full cam, Dustin. No, this one here. Oh. The one in front of me. That's the, that's the, that's the oh, I thought you, no, I was asking you to set this up. Oh, you didn't set it up? He didn't set it up as a full screen. No, I wanted, yeah, I wanted uh, you to, I didn't, I wanted I you to do that one. Up as a full screen. Oh, okay. Well, well, let's anyway. go to this one. This is a maquette. This is uh, one of my maquettes of many. Uh, this is one of my maquettes from Brother Bear. This is Kenai and Coda. Uh, Tony Cipriano, we hired him to do all of our maquettes for the movie. And so this is one of the maquettes he sculpted. And so... It's really cool to have him as part of our team teaching, teaching sculpting. Yeah. Yeah, he's also, um, the reason he's doing the, the thing on superheroes and action figures is because uh, those are two of his specialties. He does a ton of toy sculpting, like professional toy sculpting. And in addition, uh, he does a ton of superheroes, like for sideshow collectibles and, and all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, here's our, actually, this is our printout. Uh, he, this is a digital. This is a printout of a digital sculpt he did of Snow Bear, uh, our polar bear with Snow Bear. Pretty cool. And this is in, he teaches this in the class. Yep. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff out there. Shall we draw? Let's draw. Let's draw and answer questions. Let me put my spectacles on. All right. All righty then. Let's see what we got here. I am going. I've got a. I've got a 18 by 24, 300 DPI, 18 by 24 inches, uh, 300 DPI uh, document here. And let's see. Well, I'm going to brag, grab my pastel C brush, my trusty dusty pastel C brush. So now I've pulled up a whole bunch of. Um, Reference, uh, muscle reference, skeletal reference, uh, off the internet. Um, I'll show you a couple of them here. Let's 
So here's one. Just to get a sense, uh, here's another one. Um, just to you know, so I can get a sense of uh, the musculature and the uh, and the bone structure, because I like to start there, and then I can come up with my own posing, which is what I do. So, that being said, armed with that information, as my father used to say. Bob, by the way, on YouTube says, I've watched your human anatomy course at several points in my art learning, and I've gotten more out of it each time I watch. Amazing course. Oh, thank you. And Claire says, I'm taking that class now, actually. Uh, what animal uh, movie is your favorite uh, anime besides Bambi? Aside from Bambi. Uh... Probably uh, um, Lady in the Tramp. Vermees says, just remember, the biggest hole in the T-Rex skull is not the eye socket. Yes. It's that nasal opening. Yep. But they are forward-looking. They're predators, so they're forward-looking. Everyone says I'm actually a little loud compared to you. Oh, interesting. Zomji says well, you hi, do talk loud. Mm -hmm. What's that? Zomji says hi to everybody. Hey, Zomji. And so does Erica. YouTube question. Aaron, do you think the American cheetah cubs would have had long mane to mimic wolverines the same way African cheetah cubs imitate honey badgers? Um, I doubt it because that's, I think that's come, you know, that's happened over a period of, through natural selection, and the, we wouldn't have had honey badgers here. I don't know, actually, to be honest with you. It's a good question. One can only speculate. Are dinosaurs uh, relatives of reptiles or birds? Well, they're all kind of birds, I think. Yeah, I mean, but, obviously. But, I mean, birds are reptiles. There's, there, there's a common lineage between them. Yeah, it just depends on how far back on the, yeah. the tree of life you want to go. Are you looking forward to the future uh, Super the Mario future? Brothers movie? I'm looking forward to the future. The future? Um, are you looking forward to the Super Mario Brothers movie? No. <laughs> and uh, he ain't a nerd like I am, so I'm more excited about it. I'm sure uh, uh, my nephew Aiden is, is going bonkers over it. Oh, I'm sure. As, as I recall, he loves Mario. Aaron, I was wondering if you have any courses on perspective drawing. I do. I've got a whole course on perspective drawing. As a matter of fact, it's only $10 this weekend. Yeah. It's one of our art fundamental courses that are on sale. Yeah, this is an okay pose. something that's going to show because if I first of all I, I'm not sure the tail would go like, like this I think the tail would probably come straighter straight back I'm not sure how much it wagged around and I'm not showing off enough of the body I'm going to turn that layer off I do what if I Uh, 
Uh, which place would you like to go to that you haven't gone to yet? South Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, Tasmania. Um, other parts of Africa. I love Africa. Always love Africa. Mm. Yeah, I would love to see like the further south of uh, Africa. Like South Africa? <laughs> mm hmm. <laughs> look down for, see, we always get shots of him from the front. I wanted to try something where he's just slightly. stand up this high. I'm assuming they could. Minutu asks, I'm wondering what the best course to get before the character design course. Uh, human anatomy. Yep. Actually, a lot of people don't know this, that your, your figure drawing course, your how to draw human anatomy, and your character design course were originally conceived as one course. Yeah. And were. so he references both of them quite a bit in each each course he got so much into the figure that he said you know what this is his own course and we, we split it off yeah we did and again this weekend if you spend thirty dollars at creature art teacher you can get that how to draw human anatomy course for just five dollars Might just go back to the one I just had. Uh, have you ever uh, animated or drawn uh, foods, like cooking or or just no. food in general? No, I have not. It should be a more massive skull, head. Getting shape. I want to get the shape right. Kevin Van Van uh, Clavern says, "Hi guys, happy to see you again. How are you doing? We're doing great. We're doing good. Doing good. We're uh, doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. How do you make your line work so perfect? What's your technique? Time. <laughs> My technique is time. The more you do it, the better you get at it." That's the only thing I can tell you. Raphael on YouTube asks, have you ever thought about developing a course for backgrounds for animation? Yes. Uh, and that's something we have in the works. Yep. And it actually will be part of our, you know, as we're making Snow Bear, um, we're going to be turning that into a course as well. And um, we will be covering all of that because I'm creating all of the backgrounds as well. And I'm going to talk about how I did that. Uh, where in South America is Emperor's New Groove set in? Peru. Peru. What is the shape of the pelvis? This, uh, this shape. This look. Here. 
leg would be more hmm. up this way. Uh, Zelgi says, hey, Nick, maybe you didn't uh, realize your mic is uh, quite a bit louder than the blazes. Yeah, that's what somebody said before. Maybe you're just cranked up. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, there you go. Well, there's your problem right there. Strange. That should be better. Are there any African animals you haven't seen yet in the wild? Oh, thousands. Yeah, lots. Lots of African animals I haven't seen in the wild. Lots and lots. I'm sure even though you've been there like how many times now? Six times? Four. Four? Yeah. Still. But even after four four trips, you, I bet you feel like you've barely well, I've only Yeah, and I've only, I've only been to Kenya and Tanzania, which are that next door to each other. So... That's yeah, right. We haven't seen the uh, haven't seen gorillas yet out there. No, that's that's a big one. I really would love to. Yeah. See. Have you ever met James Gurney? If so, would you ever consider asking him to do a course on paleo art for Creature Art Teacher? Actually, we have met James Gurney, and we have talked about him possibly doing some stuff with us. We just haven't we haven't settled on it yet. Yes, James Gurney would be great, along with a whole bunch of other things he could teach, painting in general. And If I need to pull just to get a little more, just trying to find the pose, find the pose. I like this pose. I just wonder, in, in the effort of trying to do something different, I'm kind of sacrificing drama. By the way, let me know in the comments if my mic volume is better. Jacqueline on Twitch says, yay, I finally caught a live stream. Yay. yay. Welcome. We're glad you're here. And, uh, Kevin says, Aaron, I have a question. Okay. Uh, I have always a hard time expressing animal uh, face expressions. Uh, what is the best way to train uh, it? Well, understanding anatomy, obviously, is a big part of it. And understanding our own facial expressions uh, is a big part of it. Because that's, what, you know, we're anthropomorphizing the... I don't know if I'm adding syllables when I say that. But anyway. Anthropomorphizing? Anthrop no, that's, that sounds right. Yeah. Anthropomorphizing or anthropomorphizing. Um, uh, when we... You know, when you're giving animals expressions, that's basically what you're doing. You're, you're, you're giving them human traits, and because we we are the ones that have um, evolved because we're so social, we've evolved to uh, um, recognize much more subtle expressions to uh, for survival, basically, <clears throat> and. Uh, Sorry, I'm trying to figure out this. Not sure if I've got this right or not. Um, so I would say, you know, study your your human 
expressions and that that will give you a leg up Fabri asks on YouTube, hey, Aaron, uh, going through your big cat course, and I'm loving it. One question. Is there anything to keep in mind while drawing snow leopards? Um, sure. I mean, snow leopards have their own. First of all, their tail is huge. There's a whole bunch of, I, I would just say, look up snow leopards. I'm not as familiar with snow leopards, which is why I didn't cover them in the course. Um, but, you know, there's. There's definitely traits to them that all big cats have, but then there's traits that only they have. So I would, I would say, you know, first of all, their tail, because of their mountainous uh, terrain that they live in, um, the tail is, is there for balance. And so that's a huge one. Making sure you've got that. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure this pose out. Just, Gabby's here. Says, hey, dude, Gabster. I'm here and I'm actually watching this time. It's so nice to be able to draw along and be here with you guys finally. Yes. Let's see you here, Gabby. YouTube question. If Jurassic Park was real, what would be your first choice to go to see? Which dinosaur in the park? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Stegosaurus Probably. for me. I don't know if Jurassic Park was real based on their safety record. I don't think I would go. <laughs> I mean, if it was Jurassic there we go. World, oh, that's better. it was before the Indominus Rex was a thing. Isn't that a made up dinosaur? Hmm. Hybrids don't count. Yeah, the Indominus Rex was like the hybrid, yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. It's the one that basically uh, uh, destroyed the, the, the nude park. Mm -hmm. The nude park? The new park. The new, new park. Okay, I'm liking this pose. Not quite sure what to do with the tail yet, because I... Unless I just let it go off the page and run foliage in here to keep you, you know, if we run. Rick asks, I've been drawing everyday human figures, short and long poses, but I think I'm getting worse at it. <laughs> Can you give me some advice? Yes. Try, uh, try stepping out and uh, try some costumed figures. Um, you're not getting worse at it. You're probably just getting into a rut. You know, you got to break it up. Try, uh, step away from it for a while. You know, that's, that's another thing to do. Just step away from it for a while. Should mention that Aaron has a course on gesture drawing and also costume figure drawing. And uh, Dustin, if you show the slide, cause we've got some latecomers. All of our fundamentals of drawing courses, including those, are just $10 this weekend. There's more courses available than what you're seeing in that slide there. So head on over to CreatureRTeacher.com and check those out. Um, but we've got courses on both of those topics Oops. that are just $10 this weekend. Uh, Gabby asks, uh, will you be doing another workshop class this year? I can't wait, and I've been uh, in a drawing rut lately, and can't wait to break out of it and get the ball rolling again. I'm sure we will at some point. I'm not sure how much, because our big focus right now is getting Snow Bear done, and we've got some other uh, jobs coming up that are uh, that will probably take a little bit of precedence for us. Yeah, most likely I would say... The earliest we would do something like that would be summer and probably more like fall yeah. ish. But stay tuned. Stay tuned for more. Okay, I think I'm 
coming into something that I kind of like. Like he's just stepped out of the... Even put him, put him in some water. Like he's stepping across a creek or on a pond. back over his shoulder. And there's some foreground stuff here as well. Yeah, this is cool. I think I like this. Drawing dinosaurs is kind of fun. It's uh You say that every time you do it. You're like, I should do that more often and then <laughs> Yeah. It's only fun when you finally hit the pose. I'm not sure if how accurate, you know, forgive me because I'm not a dinosaur artist. I'm not a paleo artist. So. The head's all wrong. The hands are too, too long. <laughs> exactly. Those feet are too big. <laughs> You laugh, but you're not reading a lot of comments right now. I can tell you that was all accurate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, there's actually people like that right now? Oh, of course. Yeah, well, sorry, folks. Get over it. <laughs> this is my first delve into it. That's not how the jaw's supposed to look. <laughs> that tail is too fat. Actually, <laughs> what is the T Rex looking at? Something behind him made a noise and it caught his attention or her attention. I'm not sure if it's a he or she. I'm sure they were dimorphic. Do you use the golden ratio for your art, or do you think that is a rule meant to be broken? No, I don't think it's a rule meant to be broken. It's a great, it's a great guide. I don't always think about the golden ratio. I think, I think about thirds and all kinds of different ways of composing. Like you know, it just depends on what you're trying to get across. In this case, I'm just trying to do like a field study of a, of a you know, if I was out in the field of a uh, T Rex, but if you know, if I was thinking of something you know, I, I could I could compose it you know do a completely different uh, composition here where maybe it's, it's a big storm and I'm focusing on the clouds and I got a t-rex you know walking along down here you know it just depends on what kind of composition I'm trying to do but I do like golden ratio I mean it's it's definitely there's something to be said for it but it tends to fall into um, you know a lot of the third type thinking and that sort of thing too are you going to go more reptilian with scales or are you going to go with feathers well I was actually reading I was reading up about uh, t-rexes and th they're the general consensus, consensus is that they weren't super feathered if they were feathered at all. And I get it, you know, feathers really came about as, you know, for warmth a lot of times for the smaller dinosaurs. T-Rex is just like elephants. T-Rex is a big animal. And the larger, the bigger you get, the less surface area you have to, to mass. And so bigger animals tend to heat up more. And so for a T-Rex, they didn't really have an issue uh, with being cold. And so they probably, when they were young, they may have had feathers, but as they grew older, they probably lost their feathers. At least that's the consensus. And I tend to agree with that. When you look at, you know, when you look at the biggest animals on earth, um, elephants, rhinos, uh, those types of things, they tend to be somewhat hairless. They're also, you know, from, obviously from the region they're at, but um, they tend to be... Uh, 
they don't have a lot of you know giraffes which have fur but not long fur you know once you hit a certain size oh shoot I was, I've been drawing on the uh, on the background layer. Wrong layer Rob Fiore says some great artist once said it doesn't have to be right it only has to look right there you go baby <laughs> there could be sir Rob Fiore and I went to college together. Hmm. Leonardo says, Hi, isn't AI art here and all hope is gone? Why even bother? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to answer that question. <laughs> well, I'm here's the thing. At it. I'm, I'm going to laugh at it. I'm going to answer it. Go ahead and answer it. because Here's my take on I'm it. I'm so tired of people just think, thinking it's going away. It's not going away. First of all... I, you could get debate over whether it's stealing or not because of, and, and I don't think from a copyright standpoint, they should be training AR, AI art tools with other artists' work. Setting that aside for a second. It's a tool, just like the camera is a tool, just like it has the potential to make art better. It has the potential to make artists' careers better. There's no evidence at this point that it's putting artists out of jobs Will that happen some? Yes. Is it going to happen to everybody? No. Just like photography didn't put illustrators out of work. And also, and I think this is most importantly, Aaron doesn't make art for other people. He makes yeah, art for himself. I do. <laughs> so the reason to continue doing it is because you enjoy I like it. to do it. <laughs> I like making art. And I'm going to continue making artisanal art. As artisanal as handcrafted yeah, art. Artisanal handcrafted art on paper and mm -hmm. canvas with paintbrushes. Erica Bay says, loving the new paper animation course and oil course. Ah, oh, thank you. Wasn't it, uh, this is a Twitch comment following up on the AR thing. Wasn't it similar with digital tablets like Wacom? People thought that it was not real art if you're not drawing on paper. Yeah, I mean, there, it's, exactly. That's digital art in general, yeah. You know, and the same thing happened with graphic design. I mean, people were like, you're using a computer to make logos, not Zipatone? Now, there is a difference between the, the two ideas. Yeah, oh, yeah yes, Obviously, I agree. AI is doing everything. But my biggest, I, I, I don't really care one way or the other because you, you can't stop it. Just don't go calling yourself, you know, if you're, and, I, and once again, I, I don't care, but it, it, there is a, you know, you're not, you're not an artist when, you know, <laughs> when you're doing AI. I, that's just my, my, my thought on that. But I think it's, you know, for a non-artist, it's fun. I'm sure it can be a lot of fun to see what it spits out. And, but feeding prompts to a... The only corollary I can think of, and this is a hot water subject, so I'm not going to offer an opinion one way or the other, is in music, there's sometimes an argument about, oh, if you're just sampling stuff, you're not really a musician. Like DJs and stuff like that. Yeah. Whereas obviously there's different levels of of that um that's the only corollary i can think of and and the music industry has decided that you know that's just as valid as anything else so uh kirk zimmerman on facebook uh says hi aaron hey how's it going eh? how's it going eh? i was wondering if you could give any advice or tips uh to someone who will potentially be doing their very first workshop uh, and lecture. That's a wide open question. I, uh, workshop and lecture for what? I think just uh, like presenting something. I don't know exactly what the... I need more information. You got to give me more info. But keep an open mind. That's the biggest thing. You know, when we do 
lot of times we do workshops, uh, and I, you know, I was guilty of it too when, and when I was younger, starting out uh, participating in workshops, where you think you have to be a better artist to be there. You, you know, I saw so many people being apologetic that their art isn't up to snuff. It's like, no, that's why you're here. You're in the workshop to learn, so you know, keep that in mind. That's a big thing. Have you ever tried drawing a T-Rex with normal size arms and tiny legs? <laughs> no. I, I've only drawn about four T-Rexes in my life, so he, this is the fourth one. <clears throat> Make sure I'm doing the arms right. The arms are weird looking. I don't know why there's so much trapezius muscle going to an arm that doesn't use the trapezius muscle. It's really weird. Are uh, grizzly bears or bison uh, more more dangerous to humans in uh, North America? I would say bison to a degree because there's more of them. There's more human encounters with them. Because humans tend to be idiots. Yeah. I'm just going to walk up to this place and he seems to be chill about it. Hey, I'm going to take a selfie right in front of him. Oh, God, why is he chasing me? <laughs> and, yeah, and that's... And There's more of a territory overlap, basically. Yeah, right? and it, they tend to... They're conditioned to people a little more too, whereas grizzlies will go yeah, out of... easy. Bears easy go out of their way to avoid people. Bison don't really it's care. It's easy to there. end up in a close encounter with a bison yeah even if you're trying to be smart about it they they can move on yeah. you whereas the, generally speaking yeah. a grizzly is going to keep its Kestra says, uh, 20 years of Brother Bear. Any good and bad times uh, working on this movie? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's all I can say. Yes. There's a lot. <laughs> a lot of good, a lot of bad. Overall, very rewarding. And it's hard to believe it's been... It's already yeah, this is the 20th old. year. It's November. not official yet, but we might be doing... Um, uh, we're in early talks about maybe doing something for the 20th anniversary at CTN this year in Burbank, California. Hopefully by then we'll have Snow Bear done too. That's the goal. Do you have a favorite dinosaur? Not really. I mean, I love T-Rex and I love Triceratops. I always loved Triceratops when I was a kid. Love Triceratops. Have you watched Prehistoric Planet? Yes. Loved it. Any advice for making art or making time for art while also raising a family? Yeah, you got to schedule it. You have to schedule it because I, I lived that. And, you know, there was a time when I was at Disney that I also still wanted to, I wanted to keep up with my gallery career. And, uh, and so, you know, I, which meant I had to do a lot of painting. But I was trying to, you know, I was married and, you know, I had to be a husband and a father and all this kind of stuff. And so I scheduled all that. And so, you know, I, I would uh, come home from work and cook dinner and, and play with the kids and, and uh, you know, and, and do all my family duties uh, up until about nine o'clock. The kids would go to bed. Um, everything would settle down at nine o'clock every night, five days a week. I would break out my easel sit down and I'd start painting and that was my that was my painting time and I wouldn't get tons of work done but I was doing it slow and steady 
And so, and that's how I was managed to get, you know, painting every two weeks or painting a month or whatever. I would get it done and then get it out to a gallery or get it out to a show and, and the, you know, I'd move on from there. But you have to, you have to be disciplined about it. And uh, which is something I've always kind of prided myself on when it comes to art is being very, you know, once I get started on something, I don't let it go until it's done. <clears throat> and, um, and so you just have to, you've got to just be a bulldog about it and, and stick with it. And you have to, and it really helps to have a, uh, an understanding spouse, an understanding partner. This is a hot take slash question from Twitch. And I think it is an interesting one because they say um, the reason I'm, I'm saying this is because I'm trying to understand copyright better. Why do you think that if an artist does a handmade recreation of a photograph, the photographer can go after them and claim copyright? But if a photographer snaps a photo of something someone else made, like architecture or sculpture or something, it's automatically theirs and they are protected. So that is an interesting question. I think. Yeah, that's, I, I, I intellectually, I know in my head. I just, I'm not sure how to how to word it. You're taking the you're taking the artistic content of the photograph. A photograph is just as much a piece of art as a painting. It, you know, the, the photographer composes. The photographer is looking at lighting. Is looking at everything. And if you're taking all those elements and you're creating art, you're just reproducing it as a painting. That's definitely stealing. But the photographer, when they're out photographing something that's out there, the subject matter still has to be lit. It still has to be looked at in a certain way, which makes the photograph. And I think that's the difference, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I think that's reasonable. I also think, and this is um, not something people like to hear with when it comes to the law, but uh, some of this stuff is just a little gray. You yeah. know, it, it's, it's like... What and I think a lot of, and this happens with a lot of young artists of today. This worry lot, about copyright. Yeah, they just worry, they think everyone's going to be out to steal their stuff. No, they're not. No one's going to be out to steal your stuff. Just don't worry about copyright. I never have my whole career. Um, I don't worry about it. I mean, it's different if... You can get all hung up. And I think it's, it tends to be an American thing, yeah. too. Um, but there is a little bit that you, you hear about overseas but you know i i mean even the few times that i've seen someone take like our images and create merchandise with them without our permission nobody's buying it i'm not saying it's right but it's not something that's nobody's taking any food out of my mouth right if it turned out that you know a massive corporation was stealing your art and using it and making millions of dollars. That's a completely different situation. Yeah, but it just doesn't really. It typically happen. doesn't happen. It has doesn't it, happen to the degree that it's causing. Has any it kind happened? Of harm. Yes. Is it likely to happen? It's like I like no. the whole AI thing. I just don't really get into the debate about it. I I, I gr agree that it's wrong, but it's like it's like getting all worked up about stuff in the news that has no effect on you. Right. I'm not going to, AI is not going to have an effect on me it, it directly, or at, at, at this point, it has, it has had no effect on me. And people can argue that, well, they're stealing your art, you know, your art's out there. Okay, fine. But, I mean, I'm making a whole business on me putting my art out there for other people. So, so it's inevitable that something else is going to get it. But as far as copyright goes, I just don't, I don't, there's too many other things to worry about. <clears throat> I spend more time worrying about people than I do worrying about hypothetical machines. <laughs> Just relax. Put some beauty back in the world. I think in this day and age with the internet and the, you know, the ability to get information instantaneously, there's so many things that we just work ourselves up over that if you never knew about it, it would have no effect on your life. Yep. And so I, you know, I, Nick and I talk about this a lot, and it's just, I just choose to focus on the things that are going to affect me. Life's too short. Put myself in an early grave if I worried about all that stuff. I'm going to die soon enough. We all are. Make the journey a little bit more uh, enjoyable.
All right, I'm noodling this enough. That's my T-Rex. That's my, my first drawing of a, I mean, this is the, fir the actually first time I've ever sat down and thought, okay, I'm gonna try to get this anatomy and this and that. And I know the anatomy is not perfect, but I'm at least probably 60% there, I would assume. I know there's experts out there looking at this laughing, but hey, it's kind of fun. I dig it. <laughs> All right, so. I know that caricature is covered in your character design course and also in Tim, Horse, Tim Hodge's drawing cartoon, People. Is that a topic you'd be open to as a course in and of itself? Caricature? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. I like that idea. Yeah. Uh, which way was your best way to learn better drawing, short drawing or long drawings? Both. They, they both have their, their merit. You know, short drawing really fo forces you to focus on the gesture and the, the general uh, look, you know, the general flow and, and you know, composition and, and that sort of thing. Long drawing forces you to look at the nuances of shading and, and uh, you know, value and color and hue and all those things. So they all have their merit. Gwen says, why do I feel like Aaron added water to this drawing to avoid drawing the feet? <laughs> I didn't, but here, I'll show you. I can draw the feet. Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Get a little squash in the meaty part of the toe. But I, did, I wanted to put reflection in. That's why I wanted to add water. Am I drawing on the wrong layer again? Oops. I put the brake in the wrong place. Did you go to art school? If so, where do you recommend? What advice do you recommend for people interested in art school? And how can I find opportunities without art school? Um, yes, I went to art school. I went to the Ringling College of Art and Design. Uh, I don't necessarily think you have to go to art school nowadays, especially nowadays. I think art schools are overpriced. I think there's a lot of great uh, um, opportunities to, to learn online uh, without having to spend, and not sounding like I'm trying to tout my own site either. So, you know, to me, it's, 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 about getting the best bang for your buck. And I just don't think art school, any art school is worth $200,000 over four years. I think you can get everything you need to learn uh, regarding art online. Now there's something to be said about camaraderie, camaraderie and working with others and networking. And you, you definitely tend to pick up stuff as you, as you work and networking and all that, but the internet and, and creating, with, you know, with different discords and things like that, there's ways of doing that and creating a community and becoming part of that that I you know, think you can do without having to go to art school. Um, what, what other parts of the question were there? Uh, would there be an art school you would recommend? No, if I'm not going to recommend any art school yep. because every art school I think that's worth 
a dam out there is is overpriced. So it's to me, it's not worth it. Um, I just don't. I don't recommend any art schools. The only exception I would say to that is the way they do it in Europe is a little. There's some really good schools that are more affordable in Europe, but in general, yeah. to back to your original point, I don't think it's art is not a field that requires a degree. Yeah, that's the that's the other thing. You don't have to have a degree, right? And I think it's now it, a degree can be helpful if you're trying to get a job internationally and teaching. Yeah. You know, so, you, like, if you're trying to yeah. become a teacher in art, sometimes it'll require a degree, especially at higher education. If you're trying to get a say a job if you're in asia trying to get a job in the u.s because it's a competitive field and there's so many visas sometimes a degree can be a criteria that can help but at the end of the day it's not necessary the only thing that matters in art is your work so take that for what you will manuel says uh, speaking of discord uh any updates on your discord server no. <laughs> no, actually, I'm working on it. It's almost done. The plan is to launch it next week. But, Dustin, as I've told you before, you'll be the first to know. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know that. Yep. But that wasn't me that was asking. I know, I know. That was that was asking that I know, question. but you can selectively choose which question. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, you're not. Yeah, you're right. I'm not. Everybody, we're all fired. <laughs> Later. I don't know why I'm working at the top of the screen. I can move it down. I tend to do that, especially after working traditionally, which I've been doing a lot of. Have you seen Puss in Boots, Boots 2? I heard it's really good. What, if so, no, what did you think? No, I have not seen it. And yes, I've heard the same thing. My, my stepdaughter saw it and she loved it. What are your thoughts about straight versus curved design? <laughs> uh, I have no thoughts on that. They're, they're both viable. No, no, no. I think they mean straights and curves. Like the concept, like the way you have a whole video on it. And oh, well, yeah, straight, and course. straight and curve is just, it's an element, it's a basic element of good design. I think they're just asking you to elaborate and Oh, I thought you it. meant curved design or straight design. That's the way the question sounded. No, I, I think they mean straights and curves. Yeah, so. straights and curves are, that's just a, that's a, uh, that's a basic element of design that I, for me, I, I don't, I can't draw without it. It's, uh, it's fundamental in my work. Uh, Kevin asked, what is your daily discipline? My daily discipline is I get up. Uh, I try to get up around 7.30 each morning. Um, I head down to my garage where I have a gym set up, home gym. I exercise for an hour. And um, from there, I make, I get in the, uh, get showered, come on downstairs, make a thing of coffee, try to get into the, my studio by nine. And, and uh, depending on what, you know, every day there's a different responsibility for what we do. Um, I might have a, I'm, right now we're working on Snow Bear. So that's dominant in my daily schedule. And, uh, but sometimes I'm live streaming it. If you, if you become a member at Creature Art Teacher every Tuesday and Thursday, um, you can tune in at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, I, I live stream me making it. So that's part of that. So I get to, I get to uh, interact with a lot of our folks and friends and everything every Tuesday and Thursday. And uh, I do that until noon. And then at noon, I take a break and uh, we get some lunch. Uh, I might have some errands that I have to run because I, you know, because Nick and I both work from home. We, we, that's one of our, one of the big reasons we wanted to have home studios is that we could spend time with family and, and take care of stuff if we have to. So a lot of times I'll do that. And then after lunch, I'm back to work and I work until about five, four thirty, five o'clock. And then 
from there, we try to relax. Uh, Liv Mishkin on uh, YouTube asks, does Aaron varnish his paintings? If so, gloss, matte, or satin, or even the forbidden, forbidden extra gloss? No, no extra gloss. I do gla gloss. Um, and yes, I, I do varnish them. My, so you my, use a, glo oil a gloss varnish on oil paint? Yeah. Well, do you, it's, uh, it's do you ever a, use a matte it's varnish? A it's a Damar varnish is what I use. Have you ever used a matte varnish? Or? No. I don't like matte varnish. It kills the color. Gotcha. Uh, when, you, when you do a gloss, it deepens the color, deepens the value, the value structure, and it, it deepens the, the color a lot. So I like that. Will you get a chance to see uh, Tiger when you go to Mum Mumbai, India next month? I'm not going to Mumbai. That got canceled, unfortunately. Dang it. Yeah. Or at least postponed. We postponed, don't... Postponed, yeah. It's postponed. It, it, well, the, the trip It'll happen eventually. Yeah, yeah. Um, for, for, uh, for now. So, obviously, color is speculative, but I'm just going to... Here. Lizards are interesting, <laughs> reptile lizards, uh, in the color variety, even modern lizards, you know? Yeah. Like but when you start getting into the bigger lizards, like crocs, uh, monitors, you know, uh, Komodo dragons, they all tend to be drab, you know, simple colors. Yeah, you've it's got the some... It's the medium-sized medium to small lizards that get really super colorful. Yeah, well, well that's what I was going to say. You've got, I mean, you've got some really tiny, typical Florida lizards that are really kind of drab. And then you've got iguanas that can be pretty bright and colorful. Yeah. You know, but then you're right. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of a bright and colorful anything necessarily larger than iguana off the top of my head. <laughs> Arturo Garcia is really, really happy today. <laughs> In all capture, at last, Aaron's doing dinosaurs. Yeah, <laughs> see? <laughs> I knew there are people, people out there that want to see it. Uh, Twitch question. Do you change your own oil in your car? No, uh, not anymore. I don't, I used to all the time. Um, but now I don't have to deal with that. So I don't. So you deal with it by taking it to the shop? I do. Yeah. Another Twitch question. When drawing, I always change my own oil. when drawing animals, how do you figure out the shapes for the guidelines, like the shape of a bison, deer, lions, etc.? I, I, I understand the anatomy. That's the biggest part, is knowing the anatomy. That anatomy always dictates shape. Always, always, always. The fourth force will be with you, always. What are you guys doing? We are drawing dinosaurs today. What? Crazy, right? That's insane. I know. Insane, man. That's crazy. Insane. Have you ever heard of We're Back, a dinosaur story? Oh, of course. Oh, yes. Did you know that? My Universal. Did you know that Disney was going to make a film about that before they found out that Universal had already bought the rights to the book? Oh, that I didn't know. I mean, that must have been pretty early on because they're not going to spend too much time developing something they can't get the rights to, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, I was around. I was in the studio when that was being made at Universal, and, and I was at Disney. That was never being developed at Disney, so... Uh, that I know. Yeah, that was one of my fav favorites growing up. And I remember how much the, the villain terrified me when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, weren't there dinosaurs in Fantasia? Uh, there wasn't yes. the first one. Yes. In fact, a big part of it was um, the... Stegosaurus fighting, uh, fighting off a of T-Rex. Yeah, T-Rex and Stegosaurus never existed together. Oh, they didn't. No, Stegosaurus is like we're closer to a T-Rex than a T-Rex is to a Stegosaurus. Exactly. Oh. I should get that. Uh. 
Uh, do you know of any in-person resources for studying animal bone structures? Um, no. Other than just going to the zoo and looking at, you know, but there's tons of stuff online. But I, as far as in person goes, no, I don't. <laughs> Martin says the good thing about dinosaurs being extinct, no T Rex is falling out of the tree in Aaron's backyard when it's <laughs> cold in the winter. Yeah, well, we're we're too far for the iguanas falling out of the trees. We're too far north. That happens further south in South Florida. It's funny because they say they're in Sarasota. I've never ever seen one. Yeah, uh, they. Well, I know they. They. Uh, I had quite a few on the island that I lived on, uh, down in Stewart on the Stewart side. Um, I mean, yeah. I. You'd think in twenty some odd years of living there, I would have encountered them, but I've yet to ever run across one. You go down to the Keys; they're everywhere yeah, along the yeah. side of the road. It's insane. When well, I was that's a kid, what, they never existed like that. Yeah. Now it's they're everywhere. <clears throat> I figured a, a, some slight color markings would be kind of cool. On Twitch that. question: Would you say that spending money on ads on Instagram is a good way to get attention? Sometimes I feel bad about it, but it's just marketing. So, what's your opinion? Well, marketing is it, it's absolutely viable for uh, viable. It's imperative for our business. We have to do it. Um, we, and we have a budget that we spend for marketing on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, although I hate Twitter. Um, yeah, it's, that's part of being a modern artist. Part of, yeah, it's part of being. Now, At least now, if you're running an art-based business. It's a way to get eyes on you. Um, you know, our biggest thing is just, you know, we've been doing this for 10 years, this business, and we still have people every day going, hey, I just discovered you. So our biggest part of our business is is getting new eyes to to see us, and so advertising is imperative for us to do that. It got quiet real quick. Yeah. Let me go. I'm going to go with a lighter eye just to make it a little beadier. Want to go be light, huh? Now, the question is what kind of lighting do we want? I think some lighting off to the left over the right shoulder would be kind of cool. All right, let's see what we can do here. I'm going to create a, uh, a clipping mask. I'm going to set it to multiply, like I always do. And I'm going to do kind of a warm gray shadow. Stella on Twitch says, Hey, Aaron, I was a student of yours on the trip to Peckford and Cap Castle. That was so much fun. Stella! I got into the animation Stella. workshop in Denmark this year to study animation, and you have always been a huge inspiration to me. So thank you for teaching me more about art and animation. Thank also, you for saying so, and thank you for reaching out. I remember you. Also, I'm thinking about using CODA for our dance school assignment next week. Best wishes. CODA, the character? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Another Twitch comment. Uh, we have a digital painting class at school, and we were assigned to paint clouds, and your painting clouds in Photoshop course helped me immensely. Thank you for the hey, great tutorials. Welcome. Speaking of tutorials and lessons, over at CreatureArtTeacher.com this weekend, <laughs> we are running an art fundamental sale. So on your screen right now, you'll see a select sampling of some of our courses that are just $10 each this weekend. Some of those are up to 85% off. Uh, and there's a lot more uh, if you head over to CreatureArtTeacher.com as well that are all on sale. So we've got charcoal drawing, watercolor painting, perspective drawing, courses by Tim Hodge, 
uh, Jenny Medved, Ronnie Williford, Tony Cipriano, sculpting courses, all $10 this weekend. And if you spend $30 or more, you can get Aaron's How to Draw Human Anatomy course for just $5, which is a huge deal on that course. And that's one of our most popular courses. So uh, you just, just add that to your cart and use the promo code January to get that course for just $5. a little bit caught up in the dinosaur and I'm forgetting the environment. I gotta get in your use of environment. Manuel says, for a second, I thought Nick was promoting some kind of creature art teacher dancing. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Is Aaron going to cover half this drawing with shadow? <laughs> you want me to? <laughs> Actually, it's not a bad idea. No, not this one. There will be some dappled light on them back here as we get into the uh, the foreground elements. Boy, this thing's got a real big lag on it. I'm doing the brush this big. <laughs> Martin says, will 2023 be the year Manny finally starts working on his course? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> you got to ask Manny. Hey, Manny. He's out chasing cougars every day. Cougars. Yeah. And sometimes he's trying to track down cats, too. <laughs> If you're a member, do you get access to all of the courses? You get access to everything, the courses, the, uh, the digital brushes. Yes, you do. Actually, this weekend still, our annual premium membership is still $70 off. Dustin, I think we have a slide for that. Yes, right there. Yeah, if you go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com this weekend, you can become an annual member. You get access to everything on the website. That's over 600 hours of uh art lessons and tutorials and courses and classes plus you get all of the brushes that we have on the website you get discounts on all of our physical merchandise and live events and you also get weekly access or uh, uh twice a week access to our members exclusive uh making of snow bear streams yes oh and also with that annual membership everything is yours to keep it's not just a streaming deal yeah, you get to you can download it and keep it and you're good to go. Another peculiar question from Kessler. <laughs> Do you like the Teletubbies? No. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, I find them creepy. <laughs> uh, Jade Price on Facebook asks, uh, is it a good idea to do a ink wash 
to use as shadows on a on an illustration before local colors in the med in the medium of uh, gouache or watercolor? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, watercolor. I wouldn't do it with watercolor gouache. If you want to do it just as a value study, you can do it with gouache because you can paint you know light over that if you had to. Uh, watercolor, you're you're going to be stuck. So I wouldn't do it with watercolor. Why is Milk Call your favorite of the nine old men? I think he was the best draftsman. Uh, he was the best draftsman, and uh, his his animation abilities, from a technical standpoint, were just through the roof. Do you have a main brush that you use for shadows? Uh, not really. I use a lot of different brushes for shadows. Boring login name on YouTube says, I'm going through all the snow bear videos on demand, and yesterday I reached the one where you finished that baby orca shot. That shot is gorgeous. Thank you. I just did one, I threw some little, little like a very rough little dusting of snow effects on the one I did yesterday. MJ asks, do you offer sneak peeks of all the courses? Yeah, pretty much all of them have a preview actually on our website, on our YouTube channel. And then on the courses themselves, there's typically that same video embedded in the page. Here's that shot where he, comes, he slides in very rough with rough, very rough effects thrown on his head. Right there. He comes up and shakes him off. Do you think you, pl uh, any plans to do watercolors on a live stream soon? No. But we will. We just don't have plans for it right yet. I haven't done any watercolor live streams in a while. But this is what I'm working on now. That's the, that's the shot. So that was, that's a fun shot. And once again, if you tune in, you'll be able to hang out with me as I do those shots. If you become a member. Members only. When is Snowbear completed? Well, we're hoping that we'll have it done by the end of the year. Hoping to have it done by the end of the year. All right. Hey, Aaron from Egypt, always a huge fan or a big fan. What do you think of uh, the animation industry around the world? And what is a country that you think is strongly coming into the animation industry? Um, well, I think there's a lot of great animation around the world. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't comment on it more than that because I'm just not up on all the studios and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know. Um, because, because people have the ability to really kind of more than more than uh, any other time in history, we have the people have the ability to, to animate and work from home, no mm -hmm. matter what the country it's, uh, you know, so, I mean, there's, as far as studios go, um, you know, there's cartoon saloon, which is a, a top studio in Ireland. Um, what else? What am I missing? 
Spain, you know, with spa studios. Um, I mean, there's obviously getting to be, I know there's a pretty big animation industry emerging in Egypt, as a matter of fact. Uh, there's a huge animation industry in India now. Um, always been, yeah. Yep. And so I, I've always just, I, yeah, it, it's, for me, it's hard to say because in South America, Brazil, there's a lot going on. Uh, but like I said, it's, you don't have to, you don't have to, see, that used to be people felt like they had to come to the States you know, to be able to uh, be in the industry, but it, it's not the case anymore. And that's exciting to me. I concur. I should have concurred. Concur. What's that line from, Aaron? What's that? I should have concurred. I have no idea. Uh, it's um, catch me if you can. Oh yeah. <laughs> when he's in the doctor's thing, he's when he's posing as a doctor, and he just goes to the other guy. He's like, "Do you concur? <laughs> uh, uh, do you concur?" I should have concurred. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that scene. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. I've only watched it once. I don't know if I'm going to even get any environment done today. But this has been fun doing this. Is Sleeping Beauty a moving tapestry? What? Was Sleeping Beauty a moving tapestry? I'm wondering if it means like if it was, if the art style was based off of like uh, that of a tapestry. Oh, I, that I don't know. I have no idea. Any advice? One of my favorite, technically, it's one of my favorite films. Go ahead, sorry. Any advice on background designs? I know we talked about a course, but do you have any advice on backgrounds? Yeah, I mean, the background is there to serve the, the acting, so it's not the focal point. Sometimes it is, actually. I can, I, let me take that back. Cause sometimes you want to establish a location. And, and, uh, but 90% of the time, 99% of the time, it's there to support the action that's going on. So you want to make sure that you know when you're doing the background, you're thinking about the the shot as a whole where the where everything's gonna happen and and, uh, and and then consistency too you want you want to have everything uh, feel like you're cutting within the same area for instance let me show you real quick I'm working on a sequence right now in snow bear and uh, there's a section here um, right here so we come into this section and this is an establishing shot so I use this shot once again I want the background to kind of be the star in this shot uh, but I also have my character in it so you can see the character moving along and we're, and we're it's a slow truck in to, to focus on the character so that the eye goes to the character but I also want you to see the beauty of the area that he's in now to stay consistent I cut in and you know, I want this to feel like the same location, but I'm. But now the the character is the star, so the edge of the snow that is, you know, just becomes a stage for him to, to work on. Then we cut to his point of view. Now we're looking down where the camera is sitting here. The camera is actually down on the snow flats, and so now he's looking through the the fog and the mist and everything that's blowing through and he sees what he thinks is a, another bear down in the snow and so that's his and in this case you know the background is the star then we cut back now the the 
main idea of the next shot is the shock and the joy on his face. So I cut in really tight so he can be surprised. The, the, uh, the coloring, the sky, it's the same color sky as that. So it's all staying, you know, consistent. And then he starts to move forward and we cut to a, a you know, a medium long shot of the same background that we established earlier. So it's staying consistent from shot to shot. And then he slides out and then slides across the bottom, the floor valley that we established in the first shot. And then he slides into the, into what he thinks is the bear right there. So here's a group of shots that, you know, you don't want to think about the individual background. You want to think about the location and how and where your camera is going to go and how you're going to cut all that together. Um, and so you know, one of the things you got to do is really focus on the storyboards and what's happening in the story. That's a big part of your background. So there you go. I hope that clears it up a little bit for you. Uh, Alina asks about uh, Photoshop. How do you keep your layers straight and organized? Um, I, I don't <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> you, should, um, you should label them. And that's, that's one of the first things I tell people in my digital class. But half the time, I'm, I don't label my own. I don't take my own. Advice. Well, it's especially important if you're working in a pipeline. Because because if you're handing... Your, for, for yourself, which is what she's probably asking for. It's To me, it's, it, you know, because you can get caught up in a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. and, um, and if you don't label them, and once I start getting a lot of layers, I'll stop and label everything. Because if you don't, you're just going to end up with a big mess. Oh. And uh, Zhangji uh, has arrived with some uh, um, <clears throat> facts about Sleeping Beauty. It says Sleeping Be Beauty was based on tapestries and... Uh, tapestries. Tapestries. Um, and miniature medieval painting, uh, which was influenced by Middle Eastern art. Very cool. That's there are cool. many tapestries. The tapestries. We're here to see the tapestries. What I've is gone, that from? I've gotten a sniff of. I feel like I know that line, but I can't place it. Indiana Jones. Ah, duh. Uh, have you saved that grunge layer? It's been seven years now. <laughs> Is that a Martin Berger comment? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure. I <laughs> see. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it, Martin Berger. Edwin says, I bet there are still so many dinosaur, dinosaur skeletons scientists haven't discovered yet. Oh, of course. I mean, obviously. Most of them have not been discovered yet. For sure, yeah. Nor will they ever. <laughs> oh, my God. This is a YouTube comment. Sleeping Beauty was so boring, but not as boring as Snow White. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. The only thing I enjoyed about Sleeping Beauty was the fairies fighting over the color. Bless your heart. Bless your little heart. I, I will be honest. When I was a kid, I thought those movies were boring, too. They are beautifully done, but it's just a pacing thing. You know, you grow up, and I think we're all victims of this, of the era in which we grow up with films. I mean, you know, you were just used to, do, you know, 70s movies to me are sometimes unwatchable. Because the pacing is so different from 80s movies, you know? And yeah. Now, there's obviously exceptions, you know? Like, for some reason, like, you know, The Wizard of Oz seems to hold up to every generation. Yeah. You know? Still one of my favorite films. Me too. Yeah. That movie's going on 100 years old. Yep. Pretty amazing. But I will agree with you, Snow White, or I'm sorry, uh, Sleeping Beauty, the, the freaking art style and direction and backgrounds and all that are gorgeous. Yeah. Is that Ty Wong, Tyrus Wong? Or is that? No, that was, he did Bambi. Bambi, sorry. 
No, I, uh, um, Ivan Earl ah. was the background. Oh, I, he may have been the art director. Says, I used to have nightmares when uh, I was a small kid about Maleficent flying overhead and chasing me and my cousin. <laughs> That's funny. A uh, boring login name on YouTube says, Funny enough, I actually hate how pacing in modern movies nowadays feels so accelerated. It feels like someone sat on the for- fast forward button. Even slow scenes feel feel rushed. I, I, I agree. I think it works both directions. I think you get used to a certain pacing and do you know? Yeah. I mean, that's been forever. People have been complaining about movies and stuff getting faster and faster, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's one or two, uh, big animated films that have come out lately that I just, I had to turn them off. I couldn't get through them because it was just so in your face and, and all pop. Type uh, humor and, and uh, uh, pacing was just off the chart, and they tend to be young directors. So, Aaron, do you know how big Mushu is in Mulan? Yeah, he's like a foot. He's about a foot like that. Where am I looking? Up there. Dustin, change the camera. E- yeah, he's about like that big. Like so. There you go. Good. Oh, excuse me. Phone. 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 Bonberger says, as a kid, I thought Ursula would come out of the uh, sewer grid to catch me. <laughs> That's funny. That poor unfortunate soul. It's what I do. Definitely has to be one of the more memorable characters I've ever seen is Ursula. Ruben Aquino. Edwin Wallace says, that was me calling. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the one who knocks. Well, you got sent a voicemail. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, pal. (laughs) Sorry, pal. In which way the live stream, Pally? <laughs> Martinberg asks, was that spam caller a guy called Travis? <laughs> Rebecca wants to know, Aaron, is there any chance you might do a tutorial on how to properly clean up your art? Too often I do sketches that I like only to only to feel like the life has gone out of it once I start refining them. Say that one more time, sorry. <clears throat> any chance you might do a tutorial on how to properly clean up your art? Too often I do sketches that I like only to feel like the life goes out of them once I start refining. You know, that's a that's a good, yeah, I could do that. I like that idea. 
because there is something to that. I mean, that's something we all suffer from at some time or another as artists. Is tracing a good way to learn? Yeah, I think so. Especially when you're young and starting out. Yeah. That's how I started learning. I would trace old comic books and stuff like that. And then that's how you figure out how to draw those characters. And then you start drawing them on your own. And then you yep. don't want to trace something and pass it off as your own. No, but it's, it's definitely, I mean, copying old masters' paintings, tracing, all of those were our ways of learning. Twitch question. Uh, do you mostly use straight ahead or pose to pose animation? Uh, 50, 50. Depends on what the shot calls yeah. for, right? To be honest with you, because I, I don't do a lot of most, most of the animation is acting. So most of that is, uh, uh, pose to pose when I work. So just out of, because of the, the types of shots that I'm doing most of the time, um, yeah, pose to pose is probably what I do most, but you know, when it comes to. Whatever I'm doing, it, it's, I don't, you know, it, it, the shot dictates it. Not, it's not how I feel about, you know, like if I'm doing something fast action, you can't do pose to pose. You have to do it straight ahead. Otherwise it doesn't feel correct, right? Yeah, you just, you, you literally just can't do it that way. I mean, you could, but it will look terrible. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, just, it doesn't make any sense. You can't. Right. Because exactly. there's so much action. Right. There's no pose to pose to do it with. Makes sense. Every, every drawing is a pose. If you're interested in Aaron's animation tutorials, uh, you might want to become a member over at CreatureArtTeacher.com. Memberships this weekend are $70 off uh now through monday and that price is going back up to regular price on monday so creatureartteacher.com click on the link at the top that says become a member you get everything available on the website for one flat price plus everything we release over the next year and all kinds of other discounts and goodies included creatureartteacher.com become a member <laughs> A YouTube question. I'm animating on 12 field paper, but my drawings feel like they don't have enough clarity due to the size of the drawings. Any tips on improving clarity in general? Draw bigger if you have to. You know, when, at, at Disney, we never went smaller than, I think, uh, seven field was as small as we would go. Uh, otherwise, you start, you just starts getting like you're looking like you're blowing up tiny little drawings. So, you know, most of the time we worked on 16 field, but you know, I did a, plenty of, of work on 12 field, but you just got to make sure you're drawing big enough, you know, for that to work. Um, you know, there's all kinds of ways to talk about clarity in your drawing from posing to, you know, the way you uh, organize your lighting, all kinds of stuff. So that's a whole other discussion. But if you're just talking about, you know, making sure your animation's clear because of the size, then you just got to draw bigger. Another component to clarity would be good silhouette as yeah. well. If you're worried about something reading small, silhouette's even more important, right? Yep.
thing to fun. I'm just going through and hitting value changes on the different planes to get them to read a little better. Some of the re reflected light underneath, I'm going to push. Aaron, is there a place to post to see the art of our community? I always draw along while watching your stream, and I feel like I'm probably not alone in that. Um, on social media, if you want to use the hashtag creature art teacher, all one word, that's one thing that we recommend to people. Um, we're eventually going to be rolling out sort of a community discord that's open to everybody. It's going to start with members, uh, but, but if eventually we'd like to open that up to more people. But for now, on the various social media channels, I would use hashtag creature art teacher, all one word. Gabriel asks, do you have a list of the settings and the camera gear you use for traditional streaming and digital streaming? That could even be a future uh, video itself. I, I recently started tr streaming traditional art. Uh, we don't have a list anywhere, but I like that idea as a video, just yeah. doing a video on what our setup is. Yeah, our setup, I think I like that idea as well. So here I'm just getting that reflected light. That reflected light underneath really helps define the anatomy. So do pretty much all professional animators work from home? I always visualized an awesome work environment with other illustrators, but that was probably the old Disney days. No, it's actually just it's just since COVID. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't Even say now, it's. I, think I wouldn't it's say much. it's most. I'd say yeah. it, a lot work from home. But there's certainly still yeah, COVID studios. Yeah, changed everything. Now, when I was in the industry, yeah, the it was you know, it was really cool, especially you know because we were still working on paper and you know, you, you walk in the studio, there's you know 150 artists sitting in an open area and we're all flipping paper and it was great. How do you feel about the fact that some art instructors or teachers hold back their knowledge for fear of creating competition? Is that right to do? I teach and my students tell me a lot of horror stu stu stories about other teachers. Forgive my language. I think those teachers are assholes. Yep. Straight up. You're there to teach. And you're being paid to teach. Uh, like these. Uh, I know. A student is a paying and I customer. both know of teachers that do this. And, uh. The one teacher just says, hey, well, you, you know, you're going to be my competition. I'm not going to teach you. Right? That's just. It's wrong. It's, it's unforgivable, in my opinion. Hey, you guys want anything to drink over here? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a soda water, please. Mm -hmm. And uh, teachers like that should be fired. And if you do run into a teacher like that, tell the administration. I doubt they'll do anything about it, but tell somebody. Because... Uh, you know, my, my whole goal in doing what we're doing is to give you all the information I have in my brain before I die. I want you to have it all because I spent a lifetime gathering it. Well, why not you 
instead of spending a lifetime, you can get a head start on it and then you can get, gain even more knowledge. Imagine after a couple of generations where we would be. And, uh, and that's what, that was my whole goal when we started this. And when I hear about teachers that do that, I, I, I get infuriated, I really do. Yeah, me too. I don't think it's widespread. I don't think that's the... I don't think it is either. I think most teachers get into teaching because they they want to the share The teachers that, that do that, I think, are insecure and usually failures at trying to make it in the industry, so they just hold on to whatever they can do. And, uh, and they're paranoid because they've lost work to other people, maybe. Yeah, um, like I said, I mean, I, just from a moral standpoint the my opinion the student at the at the bare minimum is a paying customer exactly <laughs> they're paying that for the information so was this um question or comment that i walked in on oh it was just about some teachers withhold information because they don't want to create competition what yeah there's teachers that do that yep. wow and they're open about it yeah which oh <laughs> I, I really wish I could meet a teacher that feels comfortable enough to tell me so I can unload on them. <laughs> it just really irks me. Fun Film Animation says, Hey, Aaron, ever since I've become a member, I've learned so much. You are a great teacher and you break down anatomy so well. You're a great inspiration. I would recommend people become a member. Well, I'm not going to give you all the information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Did you know Rosa Bon here? Bon here, B O N H E U R. Do you know oh, her from Brazil? Is it? I wonder if that's the person they're talking about from Brazil. Yes, if that's. Yeah, uh, and if so, what do you think about her and her work? Does it inspire? I don't know. You? Actually, I don't know if that's the same person. I don't think that is the same. Let me look it up. A French artist and painter of animals. No. She died in May 19, 1899. Oh no, I'm not familiar with her work. Oh, actually, it looks a lot like uh, that A.F. Tate style, that era, that uh, oh, yeah. a lot of Western art I'm seeing, stuff like that. It's very, uh... oh, yeah, very cool. It's got a whole book on animals, roses, animals. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to pick up that book. Yeah. Me likey. No, not familiar with her, but thank you for sharing. That's cool. Always, always cool to be introduced to new artists. Yes. Uh, Philip says in my photography class, I the student was uh, helping others as the teacher didn't care at all. Yeah, I've had teachers like that too. Those are people that have just basically checked out on everything and just to get a paycheck until they until they can get out they're the ones that just gives you a packet and say read read the packet we had graphic design instructors at ringling that you know they'd basically say you know they'd give an assignment and then say all right just look through the latest magazines and see what see what they're doing and get some ideas from that and then they would just check out Like you do. Yeah. Erica says, I've had a lot of teachers like that. Erica? Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. I don't think I've really had any te uh, teachers like that, at least during my time in high school. High school's different. 
it's when, it's when you start getting into the higher education that it's uh, it's as my father says, it's frustrating. <laughs> it's frustrating. Yeah, frustrating. He, he goes when when uh, I talk to him about building something, you know, if he's building something and he can't see, he goes, "Man, it's getting me so frustrated." <laughs> My father likes to mix words. That's a great word mashup. It you know. is, though, because it makes sense. I'm flustered and frustrated all at the same time. Flustered. Uh, what rhinos have you seen in the wild? White rhinos, uh, Indian rhinos, and black rhinos. Yeah, I've yet to see a, a wild rhino up close. Saw one from a distance. Well, it was in. Uh, it was in Nairobi, was of in all Nairobi, places. On the Going, way home. Yeah. Of all places. Are they more common in the um, southern areas? Of, the southern? Like, southern. The southern areas of Massey Mara? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where they're common. Well, they're not common anywhere. That's the problem with rhinos. Yeah, because they're, they're but, very um, endangered, but there's still some out there. Oops, shoot. Dog got it. Eric asks, how is Marshall? Marshall is great. He's getting a little bit... Uh, antsy to come back <laughs> they'll stir crazy yeah Let's see and what big cat was difficult to spot leopards are always difficult to spot yeah I'm lucky that I've been able to see leopards each time we've gone but uh, you don't always get that lucky yeah you pretty much won't see a leopard unless they want you to see him. Yeah, that's that's true. There's truth in that their statement. Any thoughts, Aaron, on Strange World? I loved strange world i really liked it a lot it was a good it was a fun movie there were only like very few you no know, it's like one one moment towards the beginning but it was mainly like just little how would you describe it um what do you mean but like this is the there's some parts of the story that just didn't it's not that it didn't make sense, but it was like the... the um, oh, I can't remember, to be honest with you, off the top of my head right now. Or like there, it was a, oh, there was like a fight or something that wasn't earned. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, but once you, once you get into the story, then I thought it was great. Yeah. But yeah, there was, a, you know, the main relationship, I felt, kind of got a little bit rushed in the beginning. Question for Dustin, Nick, and Aaron. Any New Year's resolutions this year? I don't do New Year's resolutions because I always break them. <laughs> um, no, not for me. What about you, Dustin? Try to get healthier. That's a good one. And uh, try to and, and attempt to finally get my uh, future... Uh, desktop built hmm. I haven't really thought about it because while I lived in Sarasota my New Year's resolution every year was take more advantage of the water and I never did <laughs> so I'm not sure now that I'm more inland we still got the spring waters around here yeah true yeah we'll stick with that Get to the water more. So what I'm doing right now is I'm creating a brush. I'm going to create a texture brush to create skin texture. 
Not quite sure how it's going to work. Do you make double and triple backups of your art? Uh, yes. Of digital art, anyway. Are there any uh, animators that you um, that you know that worked on Strange World? Um, I'm sure, I there's the director. A, I'm sure there's a bunch. Just yeah, there's a you know, Disney is a completely different place from you know I left tw uh, 13 years ago, so it's not the same studio anymore. Many, many, many of the artists that I used to work with are not there anymore. Which Pixar movie is your favorite? Uh, probably The Incredibles franchise. I think I'll say Wally. So, what I'm doing is just creating this knobby skin. Navi skin? Navi skin, yes, there you go. Here's a great movie. Okay, so. Have we talked about that on the Friday streams yet? We must have. I thought we did. Yeah. Okay, so now I've, I've created this look. I'm going to turn off the background. I'm going to go to Edit and Define Brush Preset. So now I've created a brush right here. Sample brush. There it is. Boom. But there's a couple things I need to do with it before I can start using it. Because if I just draw with it, it just does this, which is not what I want it to do. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go up to my, my, uh, my presets right here. And I'm going to pull the spacing apart right there. And I'm then going to go into Shape Dynamics, turn that on. And I'm going to change so it, it changes its angle. It's going to flip its uh, uh, the x uh, the x axis and the y axis, and then I want to go ahead and set it to direction, so it's going to follow the direction that I draw. Now look, now I've got some interesting random texture that I can draw. See that? And that's going to make a nice little texture on the, on the, uh, and I can go over it and it creates even more. Actually, I really like this. I'm going to save that. And a uh, lizard texture. Lizard. Here, lizard, lizard, lizard. Little lizard. All right, so lizard texture. There it is. Look at that. Creates a nice little texture. So now I'm going to come back to our dinosaur and let's get into the face a little bit what words of wisdom did Glenn Keane give you <clears throat> don't eat yellow snow <laughs> <laughs> he gave me all kinds of I didn't know he was a Frank Zappa fan <laughs> he uh there we go he um <coughs> Ooh, sorry. Lots of artistic wisdom, uh, things to look out for. I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to say. Overlay. Let's try that. Is there a way to emboss the texture? Uh, I wouldn't need to. I don't know if you can, and with uh, the brushes, I don't know if you can do that. Maybe you can. Question for Aaron. What animal would you recommend to draw while at the zoo? Are there animals that are easier to draw than others? Yes, the worm exhibit. The worm. Draw at the worm exhibit. No, it's... All animals are hard. They, they just are. And uh, it's understanding the anatomy before you go in. That's, that's the key to it all. Understanding that anatomy. Any plans for a how to draw reptiles course? That would be amazing. That was one of the reasons I drew a dinosaur today is because we've been getting that request a lot. And uh, 
Yes, we we want to do that. We haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, I think 2023 well, might be the year for that. The year of the year of the cat. Yeah. Yes. Everybody wants to be a cat. So sign up at creatureartteacher.com and become a member. <laughs> creatureartteacher.com. And you can look forward to new animal drawing courses this year. There we go. Most likely. That's kind of working out. It is quite nice. Gives them a little bit of texture without being overwhelming with it. I'm going to turn off some of these uh, branches. Whoa, look at that. Keep that one back on. Where is, there it is. I'm just going to turn that off because I'm not going to get to the background on this, uh, on this live stream. So we're just going to play with this a little bit. Let me guess you're going to do the thin angled light. No. No. No? No. No. You guess all you want. Actually, I want to, uh, I want to darken the background a little bit just to get him to pop a little more. Eric on Twitch says, Dustin, I bought your wildlife photo reference pack recently, and there are so many great pics. I'm looking forward to doing some drawings from them. Oh, thanks, man. Glad you're enjoying them. Who's that again? Eric. Eric. Thank you, Eric. You know, Eric. Uh, another Twitch question. Is there a Blue Sky film that you wish you worked on? Um, no. You did a little. I mean. I like Blue Sky. I, mean, I like. kind of worked on Ferdinand. I think, well, barely. A little bit. I did some little t little bits of test animation, 2D test animation for Ferdinand. I'm going to do such a big cheat right here. We're going to add some mist. He's stepping out of the mist, the fog. And I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, this is going to be a big cheat. Kimberly, uh, Kimberly and Matsumoto on uh, Facebook says, just like to say that your school is the most complete and gener generous school online. Yesterday got to see brushes, classes, photo references. Super happy uh, to gift the school for a year. Cheers to everyone involved. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because this is something that we feel strongly about. We're very passionate with our work. Which would you say has gotten you farther in your career? Recognition of your skills or connections in the industry? Um, recognition of skill. Recognition of you, certain technology. You don't get any, it doesn't matter who you know, if you don't have the skill, you're not going to get anywhere. Right. Like you became a direct, I mean, there was lots of 
talented artists at at Disney, but you became a director because they recognized yeah some skill or capability with you within yeah. you. Part of it was the ability, you know, a big part of directing is is working with a crew. And a big part of working with a crew is being able to teach. That's one of the things I think I've, one of the reasons I've fallen into what we do here um, as well as we have is because of the, you know, I've worked with some really great uh, mentors over the years and I was able to kind of glean from them. That's kind of neat. I like this. Yeah, I like it too. Nice and simple. See? There's ways of getting out of this if you're running out of time. <laughs> you're running out of time! Wait, I can fix this. Have you ever visited the Moroccan Sahara? No. That's a part of the world I want to go to as well. Is Morocco and all of that. Are elephants approachable to humans? No. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Don't. Depends on location. No. No, it's like walking up to a bison. You just don't do it. <laughs> like on the wild, yeah. No, but I'm talking, I was talking like the orphanages or... Oh, yeah. And in that case, places. yeah, when we were at the, or at the elephant orphanage and all that, that was, that was great. If you're on the wild and you see an elephant... No. In fact, uh, I think there's a, uh, like the areas that we went to, Maasai Mara, the elephants there are a lot more relaxed. Yeah. But there are, there are some other areas. Tanzania, there's a, you know, when I went to the Tering, when I went to Tarangiri National Park, the elephants were very aggressive there if you got too close because they remember being poached. Yeah, Tanzania was, was like a very, very bad spot for poaching. Yep. Because of poaching. Because a lot of the animals out there became more aggressive to humans. Mm -hmm. Leandro says, you can approach an elephant as, as if you want, but you'll probably only do it once. That's right. It's like, it's like skydiving without a parachute. You can do it once. <laughs> Flarnas, do you like Wallace and Gromit? I love, Lo I love Wallace I and love Gromit. I love stop motion. We need more cheese, Gromit. <laughs> Emma says... I'm a dinosaur slash paleontology enthusiast who also loves art. It would be my dream to combine those in a job someday. Isn't it? Wouldn't it be though? I, that's cool. That's you know, that's why I love doing what we're doing here because I love drawing animals and and teaching and being able to do this and make a living at it. You know, getting up every day is a joy. Fun Film Animation says, one day I'm going to learn how to animate an alligator walking, and then I'm going to put Loki horns on him so he's a variant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The dog just farted. Oh, no. oh my God. Yeah. He does wait. this all the time. He'll come in here. It hasn't hit me just to, He comes over to my room. He, he comes, and comes walking right up behind me, farts, and then lays down. <laughs> oh, well, he's comfortable around you, Aaron. Oh. Uh, actually, on that note, uh, in your... On that note... Not on that note, but on the previous uh -huh. note, uh, you actually have a lesson on how to animate an alligator walk in your I do my uh, uh, four-legged four walk. walk bundle, uh -huh. which is at creatureartteacher.com. See, we cover all kinds of stuff over there: animation, art. Right now, we're having a huge sale on our drawing and fundamentals courses. They're all just ten dollars this weekend. 
You know, when we say fundamentals, that's everything from the basics of drawing with Ronnie Williford to oil painting with Aaron Blaze, watercolor painting with Aaron, watercolor painting with Jenny Medved, charcoal. So basically a lot of your traditional media and traditional drawing skills. And being good at those skills, you can then apply those to digital art and vice versa. So art fundamentals on sale this weekend, $10 each, creatureartteacher.com. And if you spend over $30, you can get our How to Draw Human Anatomy course for just $5. I'm just going to add a few details in here. and One more thing? No, not one more thing yet. I'm not there yet. I'm going to, then I'm going to hit the environment really quick, a little bit more. I'm a little lost on creating this. I'm not enough of a dinosaur expert to... Aaron, do you know the animal artist Joe Weatherly? I do. I know Joe, Joe Weatherly as a person, yes. Personally? Yes. You've done workshops with him, right? Uh, no, I've never done a workshop with him. Oh, I thought, I, how did, I might be confusing him with someone else. How do you know Joe? Um, just through the industry. Anima he's in animation, and, but he also draws animals, and we've just crossed paths. Oh, I gotcha. Like this, I'm gonna change that. Where is it? See, I didn't label my layers. Where is that? There it is. One of the things I want to change. up here. Doggone it, come on, which layer are you? That one right there. I've got my rim lighting on several different layers. Idiot. Do you like to sketch raptors? Yes. Any kind of bird of prey, I love drawing. That feels better to me. I wanted that eye ridge to go into the muscle a little differently. Uh, Manos asks, hey, Aaron, I'm watching your channel for about a year, and you are an amazing guy with good vibes. Also, Brother Bear is one of my favorite movies. Totally random, but have you ever visited Greece? 
I have not. And we, actually, we, we've talked about Greece recently. We have a, uh, one of our members, a fan um, that lives in Greece, and so we communicate with them quite a bit. And uh, first of all, I want to go just to have the food. <laughs> but um, uh, we, we'd want to, I definitely want to get there. I want to do like a Greece, Italy, Croatia kind of trip, hit that whole area. 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 What is the most dangerous bird of prey? Most dangerous? Yeah. To people, or because there's, they're, I mean, they're not really dangerous to people. Um, you know, the probably the most powerful is the either the harpy or the Philippine monkey-eating eagle. The world's most dangerous bird is generally considered to be the cassowary. Yes. Is that a bird of prey? No, that's a. It's a giant. It's like a giant turkey, right? I mean, I know it's not. It's. Yes. I know what it is. I'm it's just. Aus, it's Australia's it's, version of a ostrich. Right. They will kick you to death. Rip your open. Rip you right open. Those are ones when you see cassowaries, emus, and ostriches, and you look at their feet. You're like, that's when I'm like, yeah, they're dinosaurs. That's a dinosaur. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we used to have an emu. Where I used to live, we kind of backed up to a, a farm, and the guy had an emu, and we would go over and feed the cows and the horses and stuff like that. He was cool with it. But every so often, that emu would walk over and didn't want us over there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't like this either. I'm going to change this. Alina says, every time you render, I think it can't get any better than that. And you prove me wrong every time with one more thing. <laughs> well, thank you. Is a bald eagle dangerous to humans? No. No, it's not. No, no, no. Now, they do say that, th this is a theory anyway, that there was a time when humans had, and they don't know if it goes all the way back from, descended from, uh, you know, uh, chimps or whatever, or if there actually were overlap, but they do think there was a time when early humans had raptors that were predators. So, oh, yeah. So we still lived in the savannas and the trees and everything else. Mm -hmm. So they think that that feeling that you know when you when you see a shadow go overhead and you'll go you'll flinch. They think that's a throwback to like, mm. it, you know. Yeah. A and uh, I think it's Lucy. Uh, what's the the one that has the the puncture holes in the back of the skull? Yep. Yep. They think her cause of death was a uh, leopard. No, I I read it was a raptor. Bird of prey. Oh, then we're talking about something different. Yeah. Because the one I the the one I was reading about it has two perfect holes in the back of oh no I, yeah in the back of the skull, and they they put a leopard skull on it and the canines fit perfectly into the eye sockets and then the the bottom uh, fangs fit perfectly into the holes in mm. the back of the skull. Oh, 
No, it's actually interesting. We are talking about the same one. There's debate about whether it's caused by a leopard or a bird of prey. Oh, mm. interesting. Although it does say the leopard is the leading theory. Yeah, I would just I, I would imagine because. But what they also said was there's evidence in the eye sockets of claws that could line up with a bird. So. That could yeah, but that could have been scavenging. Yeah, it could be. That, that was the other theory. Was the scavenging? Either way, it's pretty fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I'm just cleaning cleaning this head up. I want to get these markings to to be a little clearer, a little better. Will you ever come visit Romania? <clears throat> we would love to, actually. Um, we were trying to do a, a Romanian trip uh, a few years ago, but it fell through. We couldn't get the funding. We have uh, some Romanian friends here in Florida that have wanted to, to get us there. and We'd love to go. How long do you let yourself render for? Until it's done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm getting close. I just wanted to... Uh... Man, I'm glad we got rid of that other stuff. I like this, him kind of sitting in the mist here. This is kind of cool. I feel like it needs a little something. I'm not sure what yet. Let me figure it out. Just hold on. Just hold on. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Can I swim with hippos in Africa or it's a no? Definitely a no. <laughs> What's that? Uh, Kess was asking, Can I swim with hippos in Africa? <laughs> That's a no. Uh, hippos are very territorial and are willing to try to think of stomp and bite, and their bites can. Basically, chop you in half. Also, another reason you wouldn't want to is, even aside from the hippos, pretty much any body of water in which there's a hippo in Africa, there's probably going to be a croc. Yeah. And crocs are just, just as uh, bad. Mm-hmm. Well, and crocs are intentionally meat eaters. You know, hippos don't want to eat you. They just want you to get the heck out of their way. Same net result, though. Yep. Somebody says, all it needs now is Jeff Goldblum on the back of a Jeep. <laughs> Must go faster. Must go faster. <laughs> uh, the idea is right. The execution's horrible. I need... I mean, his joke wasn't that bad. <laughs> I need paleo vegetation referrals. Paleo vegetation reference. That's why in Jurassic Park they brought in the botanist. Is it Cretaceous? A dinosaur? Is T. Rex Cretaceous? Probably. Or so. Jurassic. It's Jurassic. What am I saying? Lots of ferns. Let's see here. I thought there was a lot of conifer carnivorous, coniferous, coniferous pine trees. Hmm. Interesting.
Yeah. Right. Uh, can you please tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Cool. Uh, they're different species. They're different so. species completely. An alligator tends to have a, a uh, more of a rounded, snubbed nose. Uh, they're not as big as a croc. And also, uh, alligator's eyes are outside the skull, while the crocodile's uh, eyes are more sunken into the skull. The bottom of their jaw is a little different too. The coloration's different. The spot, the spine, is uh, different. Like the um, the spike, the spiky parts that come off the back. Yeah. I believe um, if you're talking about a saltwater croc too, that's going to get much bigger than an alligator, right? Yeah, that's yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah like an owl crocodile. Yeah. Salt water versus fresh water generally. Not always. But. Although Nile crocodiles are fresh water. Fresh. Yeah. But there's not really a whole lot of salt water alligators, right? Uh, well, there's only one alligator. Right. Uh, yeah. So, in the United States. I've heard there's been, there are salt water crocodiles in that. We have, we have salt water, we have American crocodiles. Yep. We have, they're, they're down in the Everglades, Florida Bay. There is some brackish water where they overlap, but... Yes. And I've heard that salt water, um, the, the crocodiles that have been in salt water uh, have been shown to be more aggressive. Yes, that's than true as well. Fresh water. Yeah. It tends to be true of other animals too, because the theory is tigers... Tigers that have to drink salt water tend to be very aggressive as well, yeah. I think that's how the story of the... Um, the, the two lions that end up uh, uh, hunting humans. Uh huh. And um, it's what that movie, that one movie is based on. Um, oh, God. What's Ghost that in the Darkness. Huh? Ghost in the Darkness. Ghost in the Dark? Ghost in the Darkness. Oh, Ghost in the Darkness, yeah. Well, they weren't, they weren't eating, drinking salt water. Those are, those are Sabo lions. Those lines are in Sabo. They were two brothers that just got a taste for people. I've actually seen their their uh, mounts. I saw them at the was it Chicago? I think it was. No, it was uh, was it New York or D.C.? I can't remember where it was actually. Have you started watching 1923 yet, Aaron? Um, I, uh, yes, I have. Hey, did you see the the one guy in Africa and his job is basically to go after the yeah. man eating? I got really annoyed with. It. First of all, the lion he kills—that's the worst stuffed fake lion I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. That was horrible. <laughs> and then uh, there's no there's no man eating leopards out there. That's not a thing. Man eating leopards? Yeah. Yeah, there are. No, not not like that. I mean that was that was the whole thing with uh, the Masse and Jorge and all that was he was his concern was the leopards would. That's why he had the Masse in the camp at night. I don't buy it. The leopards are too small. Yes, there's there's been leopards attack leopards attack, but there's no leopard man eaters. Can hyenas kill humans? They could. I don't know if they ever have. They may have. There was a leopard in the central provinces which killed nearly 150 people, all of them women and children in the early 1900s in Africa. It was eventually shot and killed. Wow. 
They must have been really small people. Well, women and children. <laughs> I know. Jesus. No, I was I was agreeing with I was just saying, yeah, that would be Foliage in the background. A little bit of foliage, a little something, something. Foliage. Jose says the Savo Lions are at the Field Museum in Chicago. Yeah, that's where it was. Chicago. That's what I thought. I said Chicago originally. I was going to yeah. Sure. Yeah, I saw them. That was pretty cool. Ever worked with Nick Ranieri and uh, Will Finn? Yes. Both of them. What project were you on uh, together? Uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Pocahontas. Aladdin, right? Aladdin. Nick Ranieri animated Lumiere. Oh. And... Will Finn did Cogsworth. And he did a Yago. Yeah, I don't like that one missed. Modern comments is saying Nick fact fact checking. And, I was uh, just looking it up because I was, I thought I had heard of man eating leopards before. So, Erica responded to Martin saying, "Nick doesn't like being wrong." <laughs> no, <Nope>, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Actually, I should have been. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. So this is Aaron. Uh, I had a little Bakaiwa Spring sign in the corner. Yeah. Trying to fight the ear to add more detail. Yeah, I just, I just feel like I'm, I'm just cluttering it when I add the other stuff. I, I just kind of like this. Yeah, it just it has that good silhouette in the background there. It's a nice light rim light. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, but I like it as is right there. Yeah. It is quite nice. <laughs> Florian says, I think we need a course on how to draw a Bigfoot. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, the sounds you were making, Martin says, that was a great Chewbacca impression. <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing the, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Dog, got it. Try something. I'm gonna try something more. Someone says this T Rex needs a toothpick. <laughs> Will you see a piece of broccoli in his teeth?
Can you tell us something about working with character designer Harold uh, Sieperman on Brother Bear? Harold was a great, just awesome person. Um, he was Flo Florian's friend when we were talking about him? And yeah. Saint he was an amazing artist. Um, very personable. I don't know what else to say. I mean, he was just... Just a really nice human being. Is it supposed to be snow, ash? No, just kind of scale textures. I just want to see something real quick. <clears throat> Turn this back on. Foreground. Here's one more thing. One more thing. It's happening. One more thing. <laughs> Oops. Boy, I do not like that. Do you prefer chimpanzees or gorillas? Uh, I love them both. Not sure it's working the way I want it. So I'm just trying it here. Yeah, I like that a little better. A little shadow. It is so quiet. Yes. I like it. This is all it needed. It was just a little touch of grasses. And ferns. YouTube comment. You should do more streams dedicated to drawing extinct animals like dinosaurs or animals of the Ice Age. Mm. That would be cool. Be cool to do like the giant bears and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, woolly mammoths. 
Saber tooths. Tooths. Go. Just a couple of little highlights. And some of this knobby texture on his head. And then we'll call it a quits. Probably making him a little more reflective than he really would be, but I like adding a little bit of bright something. There we go. That's it. signature too big. Don't like big signatures. There we go. There's my attempt at a, at a T-Rex. I up. like it. I think it looks nice. It was kind of fun. That was a long one. Man, we went two hours and 40 minutes today. Wow. Yeah. We don't usually do them that long anymore. But um, anyway, uh, I hope you guys learned something today. This is a lot of fun to do. And uh, step out of your comfort zone and, uh, you know, try some different things. This is... Can you, know, you I, uh, I, zoom I and pan on that for people a little bit? Sure. See the detail? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's all right. Hold me. Let me save this. T-Rex. Yes, it's on my computer. Gosh, I hate that. Uh, T-Rex. T-Rex, and we're going to save that in live stream. Live stream images. You got everything saved everywhere. There. There we go. Hold up some reference material of what I was going to be drawing. So I wasn't completely unprepared. And then um, we just kind of dove in and uh, using my knowledge of light and shadow and color and all that kind of stuff. That's how we, how we approached it in a little, and, uh, you know, take what you know and apply it to things that you don't know and you can come up with some fun stuff. So that's what we did here. And um, it was, it's kind of fun anyway. I wouldn't call it a great dinosaur drawing, but it's, it was fun. Be cool to do something. You know how you did that, uh, that dragon one where like they're it's really action-packed where the dragon are hunting the killer whales and it's kind yeah of, it'd be cool to do a dinosaur thing with a nice big dramatic action shot. yes that one i yeah. would sit down and spend you know i could spend two hours working out the 
the composition. That would be fun to work out the composition ahead of time and then and then do a, a live stream of kind of executing it. Would be kind yeah, of that'd cool. be fun. So, but anyway, there's our dinosaur. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us today. And uh, so we want to go over the sales really, really quick. Again? Yeah, I just want to remind people over at CreatureArtTeacher.com this weekend, we are having a sale on our drawing and art fundamentals courses, uh, just $10 each. Um, uh, watercolor courses, charcoal courses, figure drawing, um, just the art fundamentals, drawing cartoons, all kinds of stuff over there. And if you uh, spend $30 or more, you can get our figure drawing, uh, how to draw human anatomy course rather, for uh, just $5 with promo code January. So check that out. We've also got a brand new course coming um, from Tony Cipriano. Uh, that's coming up soon. It's in pre-order. In fact, I'm doing some filming with Tony this weekend on the course uh, where he's going to teach you through sculpting superheroes for action figures. So you're going to learn articulation, posing, anatomy, and uh, that's a ZBrush digital sculpting course. And then finally, uh, this weekend is your last chance to get $70 off our annual membership plan, which gets you everything on the website that we have to offer, plus everything we release over the next 12 months. And it's all yours to keep. You get to download those and keep them. So head on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and pick something up. Do it. Nice. Do it. All right, you guys, have a great weekend. Uh, if you're a member, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. We'll be back at it. Working on uh, the lovely snow bear. Snow bear. Snow bear. And um, otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys back here again next Friday. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Go on out, put some beauty back into the world, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye. Cowboy Bebop. Later.